So my job was, after we spoke, to connect with it because um, I found out from talking uh, with everyone that uh, you guys are helping to bring ministry back into industry. Hey guys, welcome to WIDU's Pastors Coalition. We're going to go ahead and get started um, uh, out of respect for your time. Again, Bishop Walker is going to need to, uh, he and Bishop Daniels are going to catch a uh, flight out of Raleigh Durham. Um, so uh, we want to go ahead and start. We do have some uh, food. Thank you to the team. Um, Ruth, this is for you. Please send our love and appreciation to all uh, Support. You guys, we called you, I think it was Friday, and said we're going to be able to do this, and y'all made this happen, so thank you so much. Thank you, family. I know we usually meet on Tuesdays. I don't know if we've ever gotten together on a Monday, um, but thank you for responding so quickly. God will ask, he's asking as many as will to pray for at least five minutes at 12 noon every day for the We Do anniversary. We continue to pray for a thousand souls, and many of you have encouraged us that while we have never seen that actually manifest yet, we believe that the Lord is preparing us. Now, Bishop Godbolt said, he said he has more people uh, a couple years ago come up at uh, altar call, thanks, Ruth, um, the day after the anniversary. He believes that so many people, Dr. Brinkley, in the uh, Coliseum, that many, you know, it doesn't make for a nice traditional altar call. So we're going to, we're going to uh, walk in faith. We have a partner in Bishop Walker who shares the vision with us, he and his team, of winning souls into the kingdom and encouraging friends of faith who are doing work. I want to encourage you that if you're going through some challenges, if you're going through some battles, then that's probably a good sign that you're on the right track. That um, we see that, we hear it. In fact, before I give the floor to Bishop Walker, Dr. Brinkley, too, I, you're working on a message for us about the battle is not yours. You connected with Sandy and I have this theme this year because we talked about how many friends, especially those in ministry, are going through battles. Can, can you give everybody just a little overview of, of what we're about to get? Not only have I been working on it, I've been living it. Uh, <laughs> living it, going through it, and uh, preaching Sunday morning. And uh, I, I just realized that uh, many, many of the battles that I've been fighting, uh, many of the struggles that I've been going through, uh, have been have been frustrating me. I've been weary and tired, and I really re realize that many of those battles don't even belong to me. That that really I should have turned them over to the Lord a long time ago and allowed Him to fight those battles, and and then I could deal with with the things that He uh, has under my stewardship. And so uh, that that there, there are many of us that are going through that kind of thing, that uh, battles and storms and issues. But and it is a part of life. But the key to it all is learning which battle belongs to us and which battle belongs to the Lord. And uh, when we turn them over to him, he'll give us victory. Amen. Um, guys, uh, I can't. What can I say about Bishop Hezekiah Walker that you don't already know? Um, I can say this to you. And Rashawn just did a wonderful conversation, and, and we're going to turn that into a radio special. What we've been praying for, remember we prayed for years, asking God to connect us with the right people and keep us away from the wrong people. In fact, it's great to have Pastor Rowden here because the Lord gave me that word for us, that assignment of winning a thousand souls. That was probably almost ten years ago. Remember that? And as we work together, we believe that the Lord is developing us to be ready for that. Victor was saying yeah, there's something irresponsible about winning souls to Christ and not getting their name and making sure somebody calls and follows up with them. Just some of those details. We certainly have Bibles ready to give, but we want to be more uh, effective in our ministry effort. We have found a partner in Bishop Walker. We've been praying. One of the behind the scenes, one of the most difficult things with the widow anniversary is to do what the Lord put in our heart. We believe he, that the Lord told us that God will hold Sandy and I responsible and accountable to keep this spiritually focused and ministry driven, not celebrity focused, not the things that the world is looking for. There's something stronger that's going on here. And in that regard, we had kind of gotten to a point where 
Lord, we want to do it. This is just so difficult. We need a partner. And Bishop Walker not only listened to us and, and gave us a chance, he said, I'm going to fly down there. This was his idea of him. He, he told me on the phone back in May, I'll come down there and help you guys. He's here. They, they grab a plane. But we wanted him to talk to you guys. And uh, Tiffany's filming for, it kind of came up quickly. But we appreciate you dropping what you're doing. I believe he has a word for us. And he'll even do a little Q&A, and then we'll have some refreshments. But I know the Lord has given Bishop Walker a word. This is our pastor's coalition. There's over 100 of us in the coalition. And it's, it's not an exclusive club. We welcome those in ministry. We know that the Lord is doing something. And all that we have and ever will have belongs to him. Bishop Walker, thank you for your spirit. You, know, you already know we love you. Welcome to the WIU Pastor's Coalition. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Yo, bless everybody. I, I am so happy to be here. Before we do anything, can we please give God a praise for waking up? <laughs> Certainly, I, I honor the Lord this morning. I realized that he did not have to do it when he did. And certainly, I, I appreciate him for waking me up this morning. I am glad to, to partner with WIDU for this anniversary. Uh, for a long time, I've been praying, as many of you know, I've been in the gospel music industry for close to 35 years now. And my prayer, I believe that the Lord has kept me in, uh, by the way of the, of the industry, to really be a beacon light. And if you've been watching, it seem, seem, seemingly, uh, gospel artists, we have gotten away from the foundation of what God has called us to. And um, it has moved from ministry to industry completely. And um, we have kind of ran after the industry side of things and forgotten about the ministry part. But when I heard about what's happening here and what's been happening here, and I've been a part um, for plenty of times, but when I really talked to, to Wes and some others about it and really got the heart of it. And I think it's important that we all understand as ministers and pastors, you know that you know we, we, we minister from heart to heart and rest to rest. But when you understand the heart of the ministry and then you understand where the purpose of it and where it's going, I think it's important for us to connect with it. So my job was after we spoke to connect with it because um, I found out from talking uh, with everyone that uh, you guys are helping to bring ministry back into industry. And that's so important. Um, I think the heart of God is for all of us that are out there as artists, is to get back to the heart of God in ministry and helping people to really get saved. And uh, we, we, we sing and you know we, we out there winning all of the awards and we have all the major concerts, but Really, at the end of the day, who's really getting saved? That's right. That's who's amen. turning their lives amen. over to the amen. Lord? Is it just, you know, a fame and fortune thing for us? And um, I must say that there are a lot of artists, you know, that are out there that are not in it for the fame and fortune. Right. That there are many out there because we are turning hearts to the Lord, but we need the help of the pastor. We need the help of the, the, uh, the pastorate. We need the help of those of you that will get behind authentic singers like myself and others that I will be bringing this year to the table to help gather people together so that they can really get to know the Lord in a really special way. What I'm finding out is that not only does people that are outside the kingdom need to know him, but what I'm finding out, there are people that are with that's within the walls of the kingdom that really need to know him. Everyone that's crying, Lord, Lord, don't know who Jesus is. And so I, I still believe in the power of deliverance. Yes. I believe that God can really use us for his glory. It's just that he needs some real people that's going to do it from the heart. And what I'm finding out, um, and which I'm loving, what you all have been doing down through the years is your heart is towards people coming to get to know the Lord in a special yeah. way. So I, I want to encourage you to, to help us, to help me, to get those people in there. I would love to see, you know, a thousand people lift their hands mm -hmm. and that's what must I do to be saved. I believe that that's what the mission is. I believe that God is calling for that. And I really believe that that's probably one of the, the biggest 
uh, fights that we have as pastors mm -hmm. because the enemy knows our heart. Mm -hmm. The enemy mm -hmm. knows that if we was to ever get the things that we desire and we mm -hmm. want, we would do better ministry, we would go after the excellence of ministry, and he knows it, and so he fights us from getting to the places that we need to be. But I really believe that in this season that God is turning things around for all of us. Yes. He's fixing it, he, the door is opening, and he's connecting us. One of the last prayers that Jesus prayed was, Lord, that they might become one. And the moment we all get together and forget about our titles, forget about our reformations, our denominations, and we begin to see the, the, the heart of God uh, uh, is connecting and becoming one. When we get there, um, I, I, I often say back at home at our church that we are better together than apart. And the enemy keeps us apart because he knows that we're, uh, when we come together, one can chase a thousand, or two can put 10,000 to flight. And once we all come together and become as one, we can do mighty exploits in the earth. And so I really believe that this is one of the things that God is going to use um, to expand the kingdom. Um, I'm not just believing um, God for this area, but I'm believing God for the world. Yes. I'm believing God that we can take this kind of what I see here today. Um, back home from New York, it's hard to get our preachers together. <laughs> it's, and and um, at Labs, firstly, um, you know, you guys did, did that last, last minute. But it's hard for us to come together like this. If we can get this back home in every city and state, preachers and leaders and pastors will come together. And, if, and, and then, of course, you know, there's been a disconnect with the pastoral and the minstrel. There's been a big disconnect. And I've been traveling all over the world, reconnecting and connecting the minstrel and the pastor. And, and if we can ever get that pastorate, that, that pastor and that shepherd and that minstrel to connect, man, we can do some great things. And I believe that that's what's happening here. It's the pastoral and the minstrel connecting. And that's what the 12th is all about. It's about the ministry of the music and the ministry of the pastorate coming together so that souls can be one to the Lord. So I want to say thank you for partnering. Thank you for hanging in there, sticking in there. And, and I, I want to put this out in the atmosphere. Uh, there are plenty of singers that are out there that do love the Lord. Yes. There are plenty of singers out there that are, that are out there in the industry that are really making a difference. Uh, regardless of what we see on television, BT, and all those award shows, it seems like what they show us and what they show you is that you know most of the singers are going wayward. Um, but there are, there are singers that are out there that are holding on to the scriptures. Yes. And we're not after the fame or the fortune of, because that comes with it. That comes with, if, we, if you walk up right and do what's right before God, and if you seek ye first the kingdom, you know everything else is added to you. So those of us that understand scripture, we, we follow the scripture, and the fame and the fortune comes, but we put Jesus first. Mm -hmm. So when you see us, you pray for us. When you see me, when you hear my name, pray for me. Yes. Because uh, I believe that God has, has, has me in that industry to, to make a difference, to bring ministry back into the industry. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I heard about this, I was like, this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about leaders and pastors that will make sure. And, 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 and the last thing I want to say, too, I, I thank you all for holding us accountable. Mm -hmm. Because you hold us accountable and you make sure that we stay on point. Uh, as we give the music ministry out, and you guys keep on, you hold the minstrel accountable. Hold your, hold your minister of music accountable. Mm -hmm. Hold your choir, your, your singers, hold them accountable to, 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 to live the word and to be the word and to be the example of what you're preaching because men are dying every day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, our culture, we love music. Mm -hmm. We love music. Music will draw, but it's going to take the word to keep. Right. Amen. Music will draw. And so that's what we want on the 12th. We're going to draw. We're trying to draw hundreds of people. We're trying to draw thousands of people to that Coliseum. And once we can get them there, then we can turn them over to you all, and you can give the word, and people will be saved. That's Amen. Right. Right. So we love you, and we thank you. Disconnect between pastorate and ministry. Mm -hmm. I don't know.
Well, I meant the, the, the disconnect between pastors and the minstrel. Minstrel meaning those who are in the music ministry. So there's been a big disconnect with that. Um, when I hang around the minstrels, when I hang around the singers and the musicians, um, the talk is that pastors are, you know, for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they look out for themselves. And they don't look out for the musicians and the singers. And most of the, uh, most of the minstrels, they take it as a job because we as pastors present it as a job. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we have to do uh, a better job with teaching and helping. Like for instance with me, I'm not interested in musicians that will come to my church just for a chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't do that. Um, if, if you're gonna come on to, come on with our church, you have to, you have to pray about becoming a member of our church. Because I, 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 I'm very careful of the hireling. Because of course the scriptures talks about those that are hired help, they don't care for the sheep. That's right. So I don't ever want us to have a great singing ministry and then after we sing, you mess over the sheep. Yes. So I'm very careful with that. So I think that we have to come together as pastors and we evaluate how we entertain just so that we can have music. Mm -hmm. right. Just so, I mean, it's, it's to me, it's not worth, mm -hmm. you know, having good music when your church is being torn down right. by yeah. people who don't have the heart of God, mm -hmm. but they are great musicians and great singers. Oh, yeah. So we have to, and I think that if the, if the pastor and the minstrel or the pastor and the music ministry would reconnect mm -hmm. Um, because again, I, I, this is what I teach in my church um, with all musicians. The pastor is always the chief minstrel. Right. He's always the chief musician, right. whether he can play or not, right. whether she can play or not. Right. The pastor is the chief musician. Right. So the pastor have to reconnect and make sure sometimes we allow our minister of music to take the ministry and we don't have nothing to do with it as long as we come to church and have great music on Sunday. But I think that the pastor should be involved in the yes. minister of music's life yes. and to make sure that that minister of music is teaching the right thing to the ministry. Yes. 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 Amen. Yeah, I can remember when I first started pastoring where I am. It's been over 17 years, but when I first started pastoring, the first night I showed up at a choir rehearsal, they asked me why was I there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, because I'm here to see what's going on. And, yes. and you're right, because there are some pastors who won't go because you give it over, to, and then I believe that's when we have a disconnect with the message mm -hmm. and the music. Yes. The message yes. and the music yeah. should right. be one. It right. should be one. Right. It should be one. Great. You know, even in the worship and praise, I know that too, that a lot of times praise is going on the pastor from the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you create worship wars. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't ever mm -hmm. want to create a, a, a worship war um, between, you know, the, the pastor and and, and the worship leaders and, and those who you put in charge, if the pastor would stay a part of it, yeah. he can guide it. Yeah. Right. He can guide it to where it needs to be. And then the minstrel has to know the pastor's heart. Yes. Because if the, once the minstrel knows the pastor's heart, the minstrel will know what to sing and what not to sing. Yeah. And Amen. what to yeah. place in front of the people and what not to sing. It's a difficult thing to get behind, to come behind music that does not complement the message. Oh, yes. 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 The music supposed to complement what's getting ready to be heard. Amen. Amen. You have a, a lot of uh, young people now that are trying to get into the industry. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to anyone that wants to follow in your shoes? The easiest, the easiest thing I tell people is that, believe it or not, the industry Seemingly, it looks like it's talent, but it's not. Mm -hmm. The music industry is really all about relationship. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the right relationships with people in order to at least get your foot in the door. Now, talent matters, but um, one, of the, one of the worst things that anybody 
can can be is be talented but nasty. Talented but mean. Talented and not down to earth. And and a lot of times the door closes because people are gifted but they're not loving. So I would say to you to tell anyone in your ministry that want to get into the industry, the first thing is relationships. They have to be able to come. People have to know their face. They have to, you know, they have to be seen. Um, you know, connect with different organizations, music organizations. One of the, off the top of my head, um, GMA, which is the Dove Awards. If they start coming to the Dove Awards, uh, GMWA, the Gospel Music Workshop of America. You know, you start letting them come there so their faces can become very familiar. People need, or if they can, they will connect through the leading of the pastor. Um, again, you know, in my ministry, you if you want to sing or if you want to be, you know, out there like that, you know, you just can't just go and grab and sing with anybody. You have to check with the pastor first. And um, that's how I was raised. You know, I couldn't. I couldn't just join anybody. I had to go, and my pastor had to say yes to it, mm-hmm. you know, and then that's how I got this. So I, I would say, you know, that they would need to go check with the pastor first to see if they can sing with certain people, because that's the other thing, too. If you sing with a certain group of people, as long as you're in church, as long as you take it in church first, you know, then that's when the doors begin to open. But I would say it's all about relationship first, then talent. Mm-hmm. Some other people will tell you talent first and then relationship but I'm the total opposite. I believe it's relationship first, then talent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to piggyback on what you were saying um, earlier. Let me, uh, before I say that, my dad, when you were just talking, my dad says something. He says this all the time. Say it again. <laughs> and sometimes we, we let our gift take us where our integrity won't hold. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I told myself. And you, and you have to have integrity in this industry. Because there's a lot that come along with it, um, you know. Uh, no pun intended, but um, there's a lot that come along with radio. That's right. There's a lot of underhanded things with radio. That's right. There's a lot of things that come on with record sales. There's a lot of things that the underhanded things that come along with Billboard. That's right. A lot of things that uh, come along with the Grammys and. All, just all kinds of stuff that we as pastors preach against. Mm-hmm. That when you get out in that industry, you come face to face with that thing and you're so interested in becoming famous and becoming big until if you're not careful, you'll take down from your teacher. That's right. So integrity is very important. Um, I just want to piggyback on what you were saying earlier about um, that relationship. That was so good, the relationship between the ministerial and the ministry. Mm-hmm. I think as pastors, many times, you know, we, we um, people come to our church to, to um, you know, become a musician or what have you, mm-hmm. and we, because we just so, we just want them so much, we tend to, you know, let our guard down yes. and don't have those conversations and talk about those logistics in the beginning. Got and that. so I think if you start in the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, those are the ones that say, we've never had that problem. Of course, though, you know, I played for my dad 25 years, and now my son's playing for me for 25 years. But... But we all had that that same, um, you know. I mean, we had that. My dad set those laws down. My father's mm-hmm. school bishop set those laws down. Um, my late husband came along and did the same thing. We let minist- um, um, music ministers know. They were good. I mean, they were like the baddest in the area. But mm-hmm. as soon as they come in, my husband was really my, my dad at that time, and he he would tell them, "You'll never be bigger than the ministry." And we never had any problem with them. Where everybody else, they were going and they're going to the next dollar. Because we told them, if you ever get to Anderson Creek, as you, as you can say, no pun intended, but if you ever get to Anderson Creek, your life is going to be so blessed that you won't even miss what you <laughs> may have gotten somewhere else. Right. And, they, and they stayed. I mean, they stayed until God moved them to, to another place. So I think if we have those conversations in the beginning, um, and then I'm a pastor, so I can say this, um, no pun intended, but I think too, if we change our conversation because we know we want music. Yes. I don't want to have, I don't want to have church service. I'm, I'm one, but I play for 25 years. I don't want to have church service without it. But we can't get out of the community and say, I don't care, I don't care, we don't need it, you know. And I, no, 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 because that's not true. You do need it. It helps ministry. And you want a good singer that can set that atmosphere. It helps ministry. And I think it's just a good collaboration to make them feel that, you know, you are important. I mean, you, yes. you know, you, you really make up this, this team. But at the same time, you're never going to be bigger than the ministry itself. That was just good. Anybody else? Yes, sir. 
Bishop, sure help us understand something we have. Um, we, baby, we're not a big metropolitan city as, mm -hmm. as some. And you travel renowned all over the world. Mm -hmm. But you made a statement uh, a few moments ago that with the coalition, we have something here that you've not seen in a lot of areas. And Bishop uh, <coughs> Marvin Winans made the same statement a few a couple of years ago right mm -hmm. here on the stage. Mm -hmm. He said that, he said, I travel all over. He said, I wish I had in Detroit what you all have here right. to be to have a coalition of pastors that come together that would work. The importance of that. I, you know, um, from the outside looking in, um, we would consider this a B market, B, maybe a C market. I love the B markets. I love the C market. Um, again, I think that you guys have in the B markets what the A markets don't have. We have a lot of people, and we have a lot of things going on, but we have no unity. And I think the only way that church and ministry can survive, they have to survive in unity. Mm -hmm. And in, in the coming together, in the coming together. So, you know, I mean, I, I say all the time, some of my, some of my greatest con concerts and some of my greatest ministry engagements have been in these type of markets, not in the big city markets. Anybody else? You were saying about the relationship between the pastor and the minstrels, and you said that the minstrels actually um, have some issues with the pastors. And I can I can see that because a lot of times they if, if they're married, the minister and the pastor is married, and then the minister does know the pastor's heart. You know what moves the pastor and what does not move the pastor, but they have such a relationship. But I think a lot of times the ministers are frustrated because of the movement of the spirit of the living God. And so Sometimes we as pastors get so caught up in time, and that I think frustrates them sometimes when they know, and even pastor knows, mm -hmm. uh, that the Spirit of God wants to move. And I think their frustration sometimes comes with that. Well, we always have to be on schedule every single time we meet, but can we allow God to come in and have resident in this place? I, 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 I will agree with you with that. I think. Um, from ministry back home, I think what happens back home, I don't know if it happens here, but I think from ministry back home, um, the pastor of your ministry somewhat, somewhat neglects the musician's corner or those that's in the music ministry. And sometimes we kind of overlook them and we probably think that they're okay because they're up singing and they're up worshiping, but a lot of times, most of the ministry that we give out, they need it first. Mm -hmm. So what I have learned to do is I have private time with our, anyone that works in our music ministry in our church. We have private time every other week. So it's just our music people and the pastor. Even if it's just, um, just two hours or an hour. Um, in my church, my musicians and my singers cannot participate in music ministry if they're not in prayer, if they're not in my weekly prayer. So every Tuesday night in New York, we have a weekly prayer. When I come down to prayer, the first thing I do is I look in my musician corner and I look in my praise corner. They cannot participate in my church if they don't pray. Because the only way to me that you're going to get the heart of the math, the pastor, and the heart of the ministry is through prayer. And you have to pray with the pastor. So I think... Prayer keeps a lot of things down. Yes. Prayer keeps, I mean, it keeps, it keeps that high, holy spirit down. It breaks chains. Yes, it, it breaks yokes. It destroys yokes. But we got to get back to the basics. So, you know, and again, I, I, I concur with Pastor. Like, when you come on, I, we tell you this. You cannot come on staff with us and not come to prayer. And the other thing is, our musicians and singers. You can't sing and, and play for our church or sing for our church and you don't tie. Amen. Amen. You must. You must. And we check. We, we, we definitely check. As a matter of fact, our whole church get a chance to check. 
because um, I mean, every church don't do this. I'm not telling you to do this, but in, we celebrate our tithers. So in our weekly bulletin, we list our tithers. We list our tithers, so everybody can see. And and they, we, I learned that method from when I was growing up in my church. Growing up, my pastor listed the tithe. So as a young man. We would look in the bulletin and we would look at each other and say, your name ain't in the time, you know. <laughs> and so it kind of encouraged us to do it because we wanted our name to be in that time, in that bulletin. So, but, you know, as I got older and as I, I, I instituted the same method in my church, we list our tithers, we celebrate our tithers because our tithers are the ones who help us, you know, keep our church moving and going. So we celebrate them, but then also, we also teach them that you cannot... You know, the scripture says if we don't do it, then we're cursed with the curse. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we have cursed people trying to be a blessing to people who are blessed. Mm -hmm. And so what we do, we kind of stay on time for that. I I think it's important because you got to be very careful who you put before your people. Yes. You got to be very careful who you put before your sheep, and and that person that you put up. Uh, I think a lot of pastors is going to be um, in trouble with God because we validate people who God has not validated. And when you put people up in front of your sheep, you actually validate them. 
And so I think that it's important. You know, I think that every pastor should also have some type of monthly or bi-weekly conversation with your, with your singers, with your musicians, and you can feel the heart of them, talk the heart of them, because a lot of them are playing disgruntled. Yes. A lot of them are singing mad, you know. And especially with the new churches that's on the scene now, you know, everything. When I was coming up, we did ministry because we love yes. church. Right. We yeah. love God. Thank you. And I'm not against payment. I'm pleased. I'm not against it because it comes and it's going to happen. But Everything is a check now. Yes. Everybody yes. want a yes. check. I mean, you know, everybody. everybody. <laughs> and when I was coming up, we cleaned the church. We came. Yes. We spent all day, you yes. know, doing everything. And we were glad about it. Yes. But now I, I think, I, I don't know where it went wrong. You know, some people blame the, the New Age Church, the millennials. Some people blame the pastors. I don't know who to point the finger at. But when we start waving money yes. around to our culture. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah. You, we get in trouble with that. Oh. And you know, and, and see, my I, I feel like this. The way you get them, that's how you're going to have to keep them. Right. So I think, again, you got to go in saying this is what it, And then again, at the end of the day, if we would all get together and jump on this and make the vision happy, I mean, make the vision happen, the money comes. Mm -hmm. And everybody will eat. Mm -hmm. if, we, if, the, if, if, if all of our members, including mine, if they will make that vision happen, yes. do you know what will happen for all of us? Yes. Mm -hmm. If all of your members right now would say, you know what, we're gonna make this vision, our pastor gave yes. us the vision, we wrote it down, we made it plain, now let's all run with it and make it happen. Everybody will be happy. But you always have those who look at the vision and go, eh, or, or, or be lazy with it. They half do it. One week they're doing the vision, and the next week they're doing somebody else's vision. You see? And it's never going to work like that. we got to keep on talking to them, keep on preaching, keep on bringing the deliverance. But if, if everybody would just have the mind, we're going to make this happen, then our musicians won't flow. Amen. Then our musicians won't flow. And then the, 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 the guys that come in with all this money, you know, they won't even lure them out of our church. Because, you know, once you get the individual, like for instance us, you know, um, I'm sure pastors here, if not all of us, you have the opportunity to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Or you could go somewhere else and, and your church would probably be better than the church that you have now. But because you are tied to where God has placed you, and you are tied to those people, you're there. And and, and you don't let nothing move you from your, right. from your place. Right. And, 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 and because you love where you are. You, love, you could have better, but you love where you are. And if we can get our, our singers, if we can get our musicians to get there, to love where we, love where they are, Love the church, love the pastor, love the ministry, love the vision, and we're going to keep at this until it works, then nothing will be told them, nothing will pull them away from their place. But it's going to be up to us as pastors to put that seed in them. And we just can't say, Doc, come on over here and play. We're going to give you this, man, you good, and just leave it like that. No. You know, you got you to gotta talk Jesus. You got to talk ministry. You got to let them know that, they, that you believe that God sent them there to be a help. And to right. help build, not just to play, you know, not just to, you know, just to sing, but to help build. Yeah. You're builders. And if you, if you give them that, you know, and again, as I go around the country and build the relationship between the minstrel and the pastor, that's what I teach, you know. And you, 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 get, you just got to sit down and have that candid conversation with them. And you'll hear some stuff that you probably never even knew if you sit there and say, okay, what do you think about ministry? What do you think about church? What do you think about me? What do you think about me as a pastor? What do you think about me as a preacher? You know, are you really in? You know, I went to one church. I ministered at one church. And um, when I got there, I didn't know that they all was high in hell. Um, but after the singing part of it, and right, after, right before I got up to minister to preach the word, 
they all went into the parking lot. <laughs> and they hung out in the parking lot for <laughs> half an hour. When they sensed that I was finished, then they came back yes. in and got back on. And the pastor that I went for, he was praising them. And I was, in my mind, I was like, you know, yes. they didn't even hear the word. You know, but see, that's the kind, that's the, that's the time that we're living in. You know, you good enough to give them a check, mm -hmm. but you ain't good enough for them to hear your word. That's right. And, and that's, that's where, so I want to encourage you, you know, you said 11 years without, we're going to pray that God send you someone that has your heart. You know, we're going to pray that the Lord send you someone who has the heart of the church, who has the heart. And if you, if you, if you stay there, I, and again, I did the total opposite. When I started my church, I was already uh, into music. I had already had my choir, everything, um, when I started my church. Um, the, actually, the first year I started my church is that's the year I won my first Grammy. So what I did was, when I started the church, the Lord said, uh, when you start, don't start it off of music. Start it off of prayer. So I, I didn't go after no musicians, and I can't play. I'll hear all the music in my head. Um, so when I started my church, I didn't ask for no musicians to come. I asked for no singers to come. I didn't even ask. For, and in my mind, I thought my whole choir was going to join my church. And they didn't. <laughs> they didn't mind me being a, their choir director, but they didn't want me to, me to be the pastor. But anyway, when I started my church, it was amazing because the Lord told me, do not build this church off of music. People will come because of who you are musically, but you have to build this church. I built my church off of the three, of what we called it the three Ps. All right? Prayer, praise, and preaching. Yeah. All right? And that's what, that's what we did. We preached. We prayed, and we praised, and we went home. For about eight months in my ministry, we had no music. And I was as a kind of woman. We prayed. And now it's 25 years. This year is 25 years, right? And if you ever, if anybody have ever been in my church, I don't know if anybody here has been in my church, but if you've ever been in my church, you will know. That you walk into our church, our church is founded on prayer. Prayer night is the biggest night in my church. That's good. Other than Sunday. But prayer night, and it's it's very rare in New York City that you have people come to prayer. Till this day, people come to our prayer service. People, our, our church is full on Tuesday nights in prayer. And that's because we we, we founded it on, on that. So I think you should stay where you are, but we're going to pray that God send, you know, send you somebody that have your heart because you need music. We, we need music. Amen? We need some music. That, that, music is a key component in our worship. And if it wasn't, it wouldn't be in the scripture. All right, so we need that. That's right. Because, you know, a lot of times because of the gifting, and the word says that, you know, he does not take back the gift there yes. without repentance. Mm -hmm. And so we compromise and we don't want to give them the unadulterated word of truth and hold to a standard because we have a lot of musicians that prostitute the gifts for them. They are playing the club, Saturday night, then come and try to lead in worship. And as you said, then when the service, when it's time for the word, they'll walk out, go do whatever, come back in that sense. And so we've compromised as well. And we don't, um, and then on a personal side, we don't necessarily do it at home. Because it's got to be a personal relationship. David was a worshiper. And so he didn't just worship, you know, in front of the king. When he was on the backside, when he was in the pasture, he was worshiping. And so we have to lift up that standard. And I also found that leading God's people in worship is not an easy task. You know, because I had the opportunity. I would sit back and laugh because I went to a smaller ministry and they were doing CD. And I laughed at the person that was leading. Then went to the next church and they had nobody. So God allowed me to step in. And I had to repent and ask forgiveness because I found that it was not easy. You know, and there were times when I would get an attitude like Hezekiah and be like, I'll turn my face to the wall. Forget them. I know, I know how to press in. You know, but we as a people, we don't take commands with 
you know, and there's a rebellious side of us that even in a CD, if the CD says stomp your feet, clap your hands, we stand there. And a lot of times in praise and worship, we're particip we're, we're spectators, you know. And I'm trying to teach my children now that if you're going to have a relationship with God, you got to engage Him in that sense. That means come in. Let me teach you. No, lift your hands up. A couple of Sundays ago with my kids, they were up in the balcony, and I'm like, hey, lift your hands up. And I probably looked crazy to everybody else because we're losing our teens. Once they graduate, they're not coming back. You know, or they're wilding out when they get on campus and things like that. And so we have to engage them and draw them in as well. I agree. I, th I think also, too, we have to be very careful um, not to make them. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm finding out is that um, the worship leader have to understand that everybody can't worship. Yeah, that's true. And I think we have, I don't know, I think we have positioned it the wrong way, in some type of way, because remember the truth says that they, they that worship, yeah. must worship in spirit and in truth. truth. That's right. And a lot of times we want people to do, we want people to do something that they're not ready to do because they're not in that area to do. I think what we probably need to do, uh, this is not a theological class, but <laughs> I think what we probably need to do is add praise back onto worship because everybody, everybody can, can praise. praise. That's right. That's right. And everybody can <laughs> worship. But we have, we have some of our churches, we have taken the word praise out and just worship. And so sometimes we get mad at people when they're not worshiping as we think they should, but they're not worshipers. They may be a praiser, but they, but they, you know. So I think we gotta, you know. So I think that you're right, but I think again, I think we gotta teach it. We have to make, you know, we have to sit down. I think we have to just reevaluate what we do as a culture. You know, um, we just gotta reevaluate. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't want to call out a name because we are recording. But it's a well-known secular artist that has service on Sundays, and the music is awesome. Mm -hmm. What's your take? I've been to one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to the one in California. It was amazing. I will be honest with you, I had to repent. <laughs> <laughs> I had to repent. And let me tell you why I had to repent, because I kind of went there with preconceived ideas. Um, I wasn't sure, but after I got there, I repented because I was actually around people and and a lot of them didn't know I was there because I went incognito. <laughs> Plus it was on a Sunday. So nobody would ever expect for his guy walking not to be in his pulpit because I'm in my pulpit every Sunday. So I went and as I was standing there, I was around some people who did not, who wasn't familiar with gospel music and they were actually intrigued by it. And I was able to help them. They, they said, this is a gospel song? And I was like, yes. And it was like, this is how gospel music sounds? I was like, yes. They said, we've seen it, but we've never, never picked up you know, any of the CDs or anything like that. So then they asked me, was I a gospel artist? And I said, yes. And I told them my name. They didn't know who I was. So they told me that they was going to definitely you know, try to find my CD. I said, great. So I began to minister to them about the Lord. And um, in that... 45 minute set that they did. Um, it's song after song. And um, the only thing that hurt my heart was there wasn't no one really there to lead them to another level. Uh, because at one point, God really was trying to come in, but there was no one there that, you know, that was a part of a team to help them move to another level. So it was like after the songs was over, um, he got up and said, um, go out and be a light. And so it was over. Um, I'm watching now. This, this was about maybe five months ago. I'm watching now. It's, a little, it's changing a little bit now because I think now he has some more people around him. I just watched a clip um, from, yesterday, from Sunday. Um, he brought the service to Atlanta. 
and from what he was saying and from what I saw them doing is getting better. I th and so to answer your question, what I think, I think it's a great thing. I think what we all as pastors got to do, we have to, well, not so much pastors because we kind of know, but I taught my church, I said, keep your mouth off of it, you know, pray about it, keep your mouth off of it. And I think that we pray for secular people to come in, we pray for unchurched people to come, we pray for the unsaved to come in, and when they come in, we got something to say about it. We talk against it. And I think what we need to do is pray about it. And I was one of the ones, I had to repent, I ain't lying, I ain't going to lie. I walked out of here, and this is what I repented for. I repented because I went to something. Here's this, this young man. He's coming into a great awareness of Jesus Christ. He takes gospel music to the street. And here... I've been doing gospel music for 25 years, and I couldn't remember the last time I took my music to the street. But I remember the last time I took my music to an arena and got paid. And that's where I had to repent, because I stood there, and I'm watching God, you know, use the unsaved man and using him to do something that he saved me years ago to do. And I'm doing it, but I'm not bringing it to, I'm, I'm bringing it to people who already got it. And so I had to walk out of here. So needless to say, I went back to New York and I did a pop-up service outside. <laughs> and, I, I, and I've been doing it. I did, my first one was back in July. So, and then I'm planning another one. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, it's a good thing. We just got to pray that God will put people around him that will bring him into a greater awareness of the Lord. And that, you know, because he, if we don't do it, he, he said the rocks are going to cry out. He'll, 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 he'll make a rock cry out in our place. And, I, and my, my, my prayer has been, even, even when I'm watching it, from what I'm hearing, they get ready to do an album, CD, and everything, and it's like, you know, we better do it. We better jump on board and do this before God save the heathen <laughs> <laughs> and bring the heathen in here and take our spot. So yeah. Anybody else? What are some of the biggest challenges you see constantly, no matter where you go in the music industry? That's that's the same. No matter north, south, east, west. Uh, I, I think um, what Pastor said, what Bishop said, is that your gift, your gift that you have, um, your integrity it, it is not ready to go where your gift can take you. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges in the music industry is that our name is great, but our integrity is minor. And, um, and I think that we are faced, because we're faced with so many different challenges, we're faced with so many different things that come, and when you're not anchored in church, anchored in the word, and, and uh, what I'll never forget, when I first got into the music industry, well, I went and asked my pastor, I said, you know, I want to start a choir. My pastor was against anything. So I went to him, I said, I want to start, he prayed about it, he said, okay, I'm going to let you, he said, I know this thing is burning inside of you. He said, I'm going to let you start this choir. He said, but if you don't be at prayer, and he said, if you miss, if you come out of the Bible school, then you got to quit the choir. you got to stop the choir. So for years, and I've been in the ministry close to 35 years now, I never could. I've almost went gold on a few CDs, but I've never went gold. I think, I think every praise now is maybe 80,000 sales away from gold. But the reason why I've never been gold is because unlike most artists, I couldn't stay on the road. Like I, I went Friday, I went Saturday, but I had to be back at church on Sunday morning. And I had to be at the Bible school on Thursday nights. <laughs> and I, I did it. 
But now the difference is, and then I get from my counterparts, they always talk about it, we laugh about it. You know, most of them kind of made, you know, most of them made a lot of money on the road. And I mean, they would laugh at us because we had to come back home. And we had to get back home for church. Either I had to get on that bus, or either I had to fly home. I had to be in place every Sunday morning for the last 35 years wow. of ministry. I had to be at that Bible school. And, and you know, people laughed at it and they talked about it. And my record label was like, yes, God, come on now. You got at your past, can you take six months off? And I was like, I'm not doing it. I have to be at church. I have to serve in my church. And I did it. And this is the difference. Um, people ask me all the time, after 35 years in gospel music, you know, you, you kind of died out, you know. I've been doing this, I, I started, close. To, I started, my first CD came out in 1986, I'll Make It, I don't know if y'all know the song, yeah, I'll yeah, Make It, yeah, I, I wrote that, we did that song in 1986, and I'm still singing it today, and the difference is, with people who do not take care, your first words, do not come mm -hmm. to church, and they're out there like that, mm -hmm. the difference is, I have longevity. Mm -hmm. And I, I credit my longevity to my faithfulness to my church and my pastor. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, I, I do I do agree that there's a difference between gifts and talents. And um, I believe that God uses every gift and God uses every talent. I believe that all of us are blessed with a lot of talents and a lot of gifts. But remember the scripture says it comes without repentance. And I think that we just, I think that we are so now, especially now in this age of time, we're so caught up with the gift and so caught up with the talent until we forget about the person's soul. And it's almost back to what we were saying earlier. We got to be very careful with the gift and the talented. Um, I sit down and talk to the gifted. And I sit down and I talk to the talented because I want to know where they are. And, what they, and, and, and where they are in their hearts, where they are in their minds. And then we take it from there. And we move from there. And every ministry is different. I'm not telling you, know, you all to run the ministry like the way I, I said it. No, that's, that's not what I'm saying to you. But I mean, every ministry is different. I, have, I run my ministry the way God gave it to me, and I, I try to keep it as pure as I can because I know how I started and I know how, I know what it's gonna take for us to keep moving. And I'm interested in longevity more so than anything. So I know what's, you know, I know what's gonna take to keep it where it's gonna be. So we stay where we are. Anybody else? I, I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know when the, uh, the shows came out about all the remakes of the secular little group or groups or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to put this up. Anyway, new edition and all that kind of stuff came out. Anyway, my daughter is uh, 32. So everybody, you know, asking her, oh, are you going to watch? You're going to watch? She said, I, I, don't, I doubt it. She said, because all I know is that's going to walk. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, she was wow. a baby. Wow. You know, that's the only thing I played in my car. Thank God. And so she's like, you don't know this? I'm like, no, I don't know. So I, I just thank you because wow. that's all my daughter knows. She Amen. Probably, wow. She was probably two years old. <laughs> How old is she now? She's 32. Wow. And that's what she grew up on. You got to give her a big hug for me. I will. All right. <laughs> she, she's the chorus teacher now. Oh, thank God. So she does gospel choir when we go to high school. And so she does a lot of unions. And, uh, and uh, so thank you for that plant. And it See, that kind of stuff, that's what I live for. Yeah. Yeah. I, live, I live to hear that stuff. Because yeah. that's why we did it. Uh, you stated earlier that every time we hear your name, we need to pray. Yes. Uh, what should we pray? How should we pray? You cover me out in the industry. Pray for me in the industry. It's, 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 I didn't really go deep into it. But it's a lot of stuff out there. A lot of stuff pulling at us. Um, <clears throat> and if and if we don't stay covered, you know, um, we we can tend to make the kingdom look bad. And my aim and goal is to never make you you all ashamed. My aim and goal is to make you all proud of what we do. 
And so that's that's that, that's the covering that I need to to be to be protected because we 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 are we are among wolves. Um, that industry, because first of first of, first and foremost, none of the money people are saved. None of none of the money, none of the record labels, none of the record execs, none of the people that hold the money, none of them are saved. They are in it for the money. We are the saved ones that bring the talent and the gift to the table, and they use that to to become rich. But we use it as a platform to introduce kingdom. So sometimes we gotta deal, we gotta deal with that, and then um, I'll come back and talk to you all about the other stuff <laughs> <laughs> that goes on in the industry that most people don't really know about, and even some of your young people or people that's in your church that's talented that don't really know. They see Sunday's best, mm. or they see uh, that other stuff, they, you know, the stuff that be on BT and stuff with gospel. But there's a whole another side to it that you can get swallowed up in, and um, you won't know the difference because we're singing the shout. You know, we're singing the shout and moving. And I'm gonna just throw this out here too. You know, there's a large portion of our singers and musicians um, that are alcoholics, that are on drugs. There's a lot of musicians that do that cannot play unless they get high. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of musicians that that are that, that smoke weed before they get to church. Mm -hmm. And 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 um, there are a lot of there there are a lot of um, there are a lot of CD release gospel CD release parties that is equivalent to an average party, mm -hmm. which I don't know how they do that. I don't know how you <laughs> drink, smoke, party I know. over a gospel CD. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, that's just not me, you know. But yeah. really, they, they, they get drunk over the fact that their gospel CD just came out. Mm -hmm. And these are the stuff that most pastors will never know. That's right. I'm glad you brought that out because for the last couple of months, God has had me in intercessory prayer for the artists mm -hmm. because I see a lot of them, particularly I know one um, close enough that her life has been destroyed because of the drugs, because of the yes. alcoholism, but they would allow her mm -hmm. to go on stage like that yes. and right. not hold her accountable. Yes. And it was for the money. Yes. It was basically for the money. So my heart reached out. My son knows her personally. And I called him and I said, please, I need to contact her because I want her to know somebody is praying for her. Yes. Yes. That God will restore her. And yes. then those that are users mm -hmm. yes. would be convicted mm -hmm. that they don't care more about the money mm -hmm. than they do about her soul. Mm -hmm. Because she's a gift to the, to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm glad you brought that out. And I think that's what happens. We, we overlooked mm -hmm. their we're, we're not looking for fruit. We're mm -hmm. looking for gifts. Yes. And I, I, I choose to want to see your fruit yes. rather than your gift. Mm -hmm. And so I ask that we do pray for these artists because they're out there and nobody is guiding them. Mm -hmm. Nobody is holding them accountable. They're just making the money off of them. Mm -hmm. And then their soul is being lost. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray as a body of Christ. We need to pray for these artists that are caught up in everything mm -hmm. else. And ask God to restore them and help them, to, as you say, have integrity along with what they're doing. So they need a lot of prayer. They need a lot of prayer. We don't just want to be faithful to gospel music, but we want to be fruitful to yes. gospel music. That's right. Yes, sir. And there's a lot of people that are faithful but fruitless. That's right. That's right. And I think that we kind of, we have a hand to play in that yes. because we know that they're fruitless, mm -hmm. but they're faithful to their gift. And we love their gift more than their fruit. That's right. That's right. So we embrace their gift, That's right. and we can care less about an individual fruit. You know. So we got to, you know, I, I want y'all to be concerned about my fruit. Yes. Because you're known by the fruit. Yes. You bear. You bear. That's right. One last question.
I just want to say on a lighter note, I know you were blessed. I don't know if anyone said anything about the little fella that was singing that song. Every praise, yes. Yeah, and it was released from the kidnapping. Yes. That, that oh, really? Was, that, you know, like, I didn't know that. Yes, that was amazing. He's, he's grown now, but yeah, a few years ago that happened. That was another thing that the Lord um, allowed to happen to really bring light to that song as well. Yeah. Again, I love you guys. Who says there's come, they are coming or not necessarily come? Has that ever happened? Folks told you they were going to be an event. We have found if we want 10,000, we need to invite 100,000. Or more, and that's what we're in the process of doing. Would you help us share this vision beyond us and ask ministers and pastors and ministries? Would they announce this? Would they pray for the We Do anniversary? And one of the most beautiful things is when partners, ministry partners, pass out our literature. We're going to have a new set of literature. We're going to print up another couple thousand posters this week. We're going to print up uh, new flyers. We're going to have fresh. Thanks to Bishop Walker, we're adding. Um, the number one gospel song in this country right now, Blessings on Blessings, yeah. Anthony Brown. Yeah. Thanks to our friend Anthony's yeah. coming to the yeah. We're really excited about that. But as we close and pray, and I'm going to ask Dr. Brinkley to pray over this. We want to pray for Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Mm -hmm. Bishop McDaniel, it's an honor to have you here with us. Yeah. Um, Amen. Sean would say we want to get you guys back, and um, we want to partner. But we want to pray for y'all. And I know, Dr. Brinkley, as you pray, we want to pray for the ministry here. Bishop Proctor talked to us about there is nothing in the world wrong. In fact, it's healthy for your desire to be fruitful in the ministry that God's given you. And our prayer is that the work we're doing, it's not about wisdom, Sandy. It's not about our radio network. It's about us taking those tools that God has placed in our hand and making a difference in people's lives. And that's what you're doing. We, we thank you for that ministry partnership. And we still believe one day we're going to see not only a thousand souls coming to the kingdom, because they're going to need somewhere to be discipled. They're going to need somebody to love them and help them and accept them. I love what Bishop Walker said to us. I wonder sometimes, are, am I ready for the thousand souls? Because they're probably not going to look like church folk. Okay? They're probably, there's going to be some things that do we really want what we're praying for and asking for. We honor you guys. Y'all have been mentors to Sandy and I. We love you. Can we stand and join hands and, and pray together to close this? I know you can pray also for the anniversary. Just whatever naturally flows, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for being here. Folks, we, 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 we have a hand over. Can we give God praise for Wednesday? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. to come out and join me and Minister Michael Ross as we bless and inspire the community at this year's WIDU anniversary, October the 12th at the Crown Coliseum.